we're back out on the bass buggy and today we're talking about texas rigs from the bank and the tips and tricks i use to land more fish stick around you don't want to miss this one as spring rolls into summer we'll have more bass fishing tips tricks and hacks that's easy on your wallet so please subscribe if you haven't already Hit that like button to let me know you really enjoy this content and smash that notification bell so you're clued in to future content. And please don't forget to share this video on your social media so others can find this content too. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing and today it's all about the Texas rig. Specifically how I fish it from the bank. When I'm in the good old bass buggy, I fish a Texas rig quite often, and regular viewers of this channel will know it's one of my favorite presentations and one that I've caught many, many fish using. However, when I'm fishing from the bank, I like to use a Texas rig slightly differently. There are a few things that I do to adjust my presentation and adjust my retrieve that I find work very well for me in attracting those few extra bites. Now, you can fish it the same way from a boat as you would from the bank. However, I think that you're doing yourself a disservice and missing out on some key bites. So let's take a little bit of a deep dive into the Texas rig and see what the differences are. Now, whenever it comes to working a Texas rig from the bank and how I work it differently from the boat, there's several key factors. First of all, you're going to be working shallower water for the most part. That's why it's generally advisable to use a smaller weight when fishing from the bank. For me, I generally don't go any larger than a quarter ounce weight when I'm fishing from the bank. The main reason is, is the closer you get to the bank, the more vegetation you're going to have to deal with. And a heavier weight just pulls that bait right down into the slop and it disappears from view and the bass can't find it. So that's why a lot of anglers choose to fish a Senko or a stick bait or even a craw weightless whenever they're doing a Texas rig from the bank. A lot of times it's a very good presentation that can elicit quite a few bites. But be careful. Remember, salt content of the bait matters. The more salt content a bait has, the heavier it's going to be and the faster it's going to fall. A lower salt content bait, such as a yum dinger, isn't going to fall as fast as a higher salt content bait, such as a Yamamoto Senko or a Strike King Ocho. Those baits have a higher salt content and will fall faster, but they will still lay above the vegetation on the bottom and the bass will still easily see them. So those are the types of baits I prefer to use. And that alters how I do my retrieve. I'm working it more from my wrist with subtle twitches rather than dragging it on the bottom. Let's go out on the water and I'll show you what I mean. You can see I'm working a Berkeley Pit Boss quarter ounce weight on an EWG of 4 aught, and that's what we're going to be working with right now. I'm seeing a little bit of activity out here, so we're going to give this a try. I'm going to let that sink to the bottom. I'm going to keep my line slack, and I'm going to try to work it more from my wrist than my arms. Just a couple little tips like that. And I'm keeping an eye on my line. I don't want to get too close to the bank because I'm seeing fish jump. Ugh, ooh, that was grass, but that did feel good. Said I'm just trying to pop it more from my wrist than with my arm. But I've got that creature bait on there that, well, I don't know if a, what you would call a, a pit boss. I always think of it more of a creature bait, but some people call it a, uh, a cross-style bait. I guess it can fit in either, either category, wouldn't it? Gotcha. I gotcha. I got you. I got you. Ooh. Look at you. Look at you. All right. Come on now. I got you good. Mouth. Ah, 
Come on now. There we go. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. So as you can see, I'm using subtle twitches from my wrist as opposed to dragging it across the bottom like I would maybe from a boat because I'm in deeper water on the bass buggy. And on the shore, I'm usually dealing with casts along the bank. Although, you can cast deep. Don't be afraid to cast it away from shore because a lot of times you're going to find an isolated grass pile or an isolated lay down that's going to be holding fish. So don't be afraid to make casts. The good thing about a Texas rig is you can pretty much cast it anywhere and you don't have to worry about it. Just cast it and work that bait. Now don't be afraid to work off of the bank a little bit. As the water gets deeper, usually the, usually the bass um, will hang out toward the end of the structure. You can see where this stick is poking up. Well, that's the beginning of a lay down there. And it goes all the way out. And there's bass. Bass will hold, will, um, bass will relate to that structure all the way out, not just along the shore. So instead of making just a couple casts here and there, you got to remember that bass will use that entire bit of structure all the way out. If it's a lay down, if it's a grass patch, um, doesn't matter if it's a dock. Well, after a few hours of fishing this little back cove, there's a little dam right there and it gets pretty deep before it opens up to the main lake. Fishing all these little lay down structures in through here. And success. We've got our first little bass today. Yeah, maybe a pound and a half. Now I'm not going to go two, but he's he's a beautiful looking fish. And that leads us to our next subject, and that is the types of places that we're looking for whenever we're working a Texas rig from the bank. So let's go back out on the water and I'll show you some of the places that I like to work a Texas rig. Now, right here we have this peninsula this man-made peninsula that kind of juts out a little bit. And we're going to work the inside corner here, this inside pocket, a little bit. Because uh, I have found, let me get over here, I have found that working those inside pockets, working the inside pockets on these peninsulas can be, well, it can yield some nice fish, so we're going to give it a try. And like I said, this is different from how I'm fishing a Texas rig on the boat. If I was on the boat, I'd actually be dragging it uh, more like a more like a uh, a football jig. But because uh, this water is more shallow. We're working close to the bank. I'm actually working more from the wrist, as you can see. Rather than pulling up like that and sort of dragging it along, I just want to give subtle little twitches. Like I said, uh, a lot of times I've had some, I've actually had pretty good success working the insides of these, working the insides of these uh, peninsula pockets because you'll see the wind blows and the current blows and blows current and whatever all up into here and the bass use it uh, any place a bass can use as an ambush point to set up so fishing the texas rig i got a senko with a quarter ounce weight um, my gopro died i caught this guy hooked him right in the top of the mouth with it very nicely he's not big He's not very big. He's probably, I don't know, half a pound. He's maybe 12 inches. He's probably about, eh, he's close to 12 inches, but he's a pretty skinny little dude. Anyway, caught him on the Texas worm after my GoPro battery died. So we're going to go ahead and let him go. And there he goes. 
Thanks for playing, little buddy. So as you can see, the inside pocket of a peninsula, whenever the current and wind blow debris and material up into those pockets, they can be very high percentage areas when working a Texas rig, and they're highly accessible. Those are some of the places that you're going to be looking for, places that you can reach with a single cast from the bank, and you can work them slowly and thoroughly. So there you go. Those are just some of the differences that I use whenever I'm bank fishing a Texas rig as opposed to fishing one from the good old bass buggy. They are subtle differences, but they can really add up to a lot more bites when you're fishing from the bank. So don't be afraid to change things up. With a few little tweaks here and there on your technique, it can really result in some more bites. And I think you'll enjoy the outcome. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.